What's going on guys? So today's video is going to be about me unboxing these tools that I scored for $20. I'm also going to include a story before I get started and I'm also going to tell you where I found these tools. So I've been collecting tools for probably the past seven or eight years and uh, you know the, the more I collect tools the more I'm looking for specialized tools and tools that I don't have and I'm looking for good deals. So I'm going to give you a story. When I was landscaping, I want to say this was maybe about six years ago, uh, it was towards the end of the day, we'd come across a garage sale, and uh, it was right next to the property that we were landscaping that day. And so we, we go in, and I found two steel splitting wedges and a ball peen hammer, and brought it up to the guy, and he's like, make me an offer. And I told him, I mean, to me, I, I thought they were pretty valuable tools because I was splitting a lot of firewood at the time, and I, I didn't really have a hammer. You know, you go to the store, buy a new ball peen hammer, figure it's 15 bucks, so I made him an offer of uh, $20. And he kind of gave me those eyes like, wow, you sure you want to offer me that much? And obviously he accepted it. And, and afterwards I felt kind of crummy because I felt like I overpaid. Probably could have got all that for maybe 4 or $5, but no big deal. So for all these tools, I ended up getting them for $20, which to me is, is an amazing deal. Uh, perhaps I got these for $20 because you know I have a little bit of special interest in the tools, but... Uh, my good friend Erica, her grandfather had passed away a couple of years ago, and he owned a three-family apartment building in the Bronx. And she had been telling me about his tool collection for a while, and when I think of the Bronx, I, I really don't think of anybody with a cool workshop. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm sure they're out there, but typically, you know, I, I had my doubts. So we finally go over there get down in the workshop down there and what a creative mind you know I, I looked at a lot of the things that he had created and, and little gadgets he had built to to make his workshop more useful and honestly I saw a lot of myself and I really had appreciation for what this guy did in his basement so I, I feel very honored that I was able to uh, to barter these off for twenty dollars so they're definitely going to a good home and they're going to be appreciated so enough yabbering on let's get into what I was able to pick up so this was one of my favorite things from the uh, the uh, the tools that I was able to pick out. So I got a box of steel letters. You know, punch them. It's a really nice wooden case. I also got a box of uh, steel numbers, and I should show you the back of this label. It's machine-made steel figures made in the USA by Miller Falls Company, Greenfield, Massachusetts. So that's pretty cool. This one doesn't have the uh, the tag on the box anymore, but I'm pretty certain it came from the same company, you know, judging that the boxes are the same. So that is pretty cool. I almost want to put them to the side and, and just kind of save them, but, you know, might as well get used. What good are they going to do sitting on the shelf? So I also picked up, was able to find a couple of body hammers, which these are really for uh, auto body or, or shaping or straightening out sheet metal, which I've never had a set of hammers like this, so these are going to be very useful to me. A couple crowbars, nothing special here. I got the head to a conduit better. I want to uh, put some type of handle in this, but I feel like that would be something handy to have. Strap wrenches. Did I get two or did I get one? I think I got one. Yeah, so I've always wanted a strap wrench and was lucky enough to find one there. These are really good for oil filters and just anything around that you really need to crank on. I also got a soldering gun, which I had purchased a cheap one on Amazon. You know, just one of these crummy things, which these these are okay. They're not really good for doing automotive uh, soldering. You can get by, which is basically what I was doing. These are good for like really small circuit boards and stuff like that. So maybe I'll, I'll use that for that. But I mean, when you have two, you know, average size automotive wires, this is definitely the preferred tool. Archer 100 watt soldering gun. I'm trying to see where it was made. It says Fort Worth, Texas. Kind of have my doubts it was made there, but yeah, surprised it doesn't say made in China. Who knows? Maybe it is made in Texas. What else did I get here? I got a countersink bit, which it looks like this may have been from the 90s or something. This is, uh, you know, if you have a piece of wood and you want to countersink the head of the screw, 
the price on this was seven ninety five, so can't beat that. I always keep my eye out for shackles. He has a couple more down there, but these are some pretty, pretty big shackles. Uh, looks like they say seven eighths of an inch on the side here. I mean, these these suckers. You want to go buy them? I feel like you'd spend twenty bucks a piece on these shackles. So this wrench, I'm not hundred percent sure what this wrench is. On the handle, it says slip and lock nut wrench. Made in Taiwan. It's just interesting to me. I'm sure it has a specific use, but I'm, I'm not 100% sure what it is. So if you know what this wrench is, please let me know in the comment section below. I thought this thing was pretty cool. This is a speedy drill guiding, or grinding guide, excuse me. So I generally sharpen all my drill bits on uh, my bench grinder. So it looks like you just put the drill bit, you hold it in here, hold it down like so, and then you just kind of follow the angles of this guide, that way you get, you know, the proper angle on the tip of your drill. I got these pliers, er, these look like crimpers actually. Which they're kind of interesting, they got this rectangular head, but they, they really look like crimpers. They have like a six pointed star in the middle. Uh, it doesn't have anything written on them. They're very smooth, to, oh hang on, does say made in the USA. 1950 stamped in the side, but still I'm, I'm not 100% sure what these are. I, I do think there's some type of crimpers, but I'm just surprised that they're so smooth being so old. I mean, they look like they're at least 30 years old. So this kind of goes along with the shackles. I just call this a quick link. It has a price tag of $329. You know, these things are always handy for what I also got a new riveting gun, which riveting guns are really handy. I also got can little rivets and these are really good for sheet metal if, if you want to you know hold two pieces of sheet metal together and you don't want to put the heat from a welder into it so that's very handy also got a couple small pairs of pliers which I mean they're still really smooth I don't know if you can see these on camera but the head of these pliers seems somewhat interesting to me they kind of hook on the end hooks into itself almost like a nipper type head so I feel like these will be handy these are made in the USA too so are the small ones Crater made by Crater never heard of that company anything that's made in the USA I try and pick up as long as it's still working okay got a pair of Chinese uh, vice grips they're always handy to beat around. I've got a couple pair of, I believe these are copper pipe cutters. You know, you just twist these down on the pipe and then you give them a couple of rotations, tighten them down. Which uh, we did a couple test cuts and these things still work just fine, so it's a handy little pickup there. I got a pipe wrench that has a bit of an offset. I don't have one like this. I'm not sure if I'm ever going to come across a situation that I'm going to need one with an offset, but feel like it's something handy to have. Also got a pair. This is it's made in the USA. This is similar to the strap wrench. I, I'd almost call it a strap wrench, except instead of using, you know, a, uh, a rubber strap, it uses a chain. So again, this is something also very handy for removing uh, oil filters. I actually have another version of this in my automotive drawer. Here's another chain style strap wrench, except this one's on a pair of uh, vice grip style handles. So, I don't know, these are always handy to have around. Second to last, I got a pair of Wiss sheet metal cutters. Uh, apparently these are made in the USA or at least this one nut is stamped USA so uh, I'm doing a lot of tin work lately and these things are always handy to have and finally the last thing I got was a ball joint separator which of course I just did the ball joints on my truck but uh, I was thinking about buying one one of these on Amazon kind of glad I didn't because I found this one but this is just something handy to have around I'm sure it's gonna come handy at some point in time but so yeah this is definitely a nice little score for $20 
Uh, there's more down there, so I'm definitely going to need to make some more trips back there. And all I can say is, uh, you know, for you guys out there just starting and collecting tools, or you guys that have been collecting for a while, always keep your eyes open because you never know when an opportunity to get some cool and unique and valuable tools is going to come your way. So that's all I have for tonight's video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please thumbs up and subscribe for more.